Yo, 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 what is up everyone? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about the expectations versus reality working as a self-taught web developer. Let's get into it. All right, so I have my notes. I'm not gonna lie, my notes are on my phone. <laughs> anyway, what's up everyone? Welcome to the video. So again, today I'm gonna talk about expectations versus reality as a web developer in today's world. We are in a recession right now. The demand for web developers in tech has changed, meaning the demand has decreased because of all the layoffs. But guess what? That demand will pick up again. The question is, will you be ready when the demand picks up in tech? But before we even begin this video, I wanna thank Wisent for sponsoring this video, but I'll talk a little bit more about them later on. So number one, expectations versus reality. Salary. When I share my life as a developer, people see my extravagant lifestyle. I don't even have an extravagant lifestyle, but people assume that I do. I wanna let y'all know I don't have an extravagant lifestyle. I make a good amount of money, but people automatically assume, which is understandable that when you join in tech, you will be rich right away, that you will start making 100, 200, 300K a year right off the bat, but I'm here to tell you that that is not true at all. Those are the expectations. Reality, you're probably not gonna make $100,000 a year, over 100K a year in your career as a dev until maybe two plus years down the line in your career. Why? First of all, <laughs> coding is not easy. $100,000 is a lot of money no matter where you live. Now, cost of living, that changes things of course, but $100,000 is not just gonna be given to you right off the bat, you have to earn that. What do I mean by this? Skill. A junior developer, what can they do? Not much compared to someone who has two years of experience. What I think people need to be able to understand is that when you do join tech or when you do get your first job, you don't have negotiating abilities as someone like me who has six years in tech, almost seven years in tech now. You don't have a negotiating ability where you can actually negotiate offer off another offer, right? For example, if I was interviewing my two companies, company C says, and the company C is a company I really wanna work at and they're like, Chris, we can only pay you 90K a year. And I'll be like, well, company A, company B is offering me $130,000 a year. I really wanna work for your company. Can you beat that so I can join your company, be satisfied and be here for a long time? That's called negotiating power. As a junior developer, you don't have that ability. So really what you earn is what you get. Of course, you should still try to negotiate for salary, but I'll talk about that in another video. But before we get to the next part, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Wisent, for sponsoring this video. Technology is a very competitive field, especially in the midst of recession, it's gonna be very difficult for everyone, especially as a self-taught developer getting your first job. And this is when mentoring and tutoring becomes very critical in helping you gain the advantage over your opponents when trying to get that first job as a self-taught developer. That is why I agreed to work with Wisent in this video. Wisent is an online marketplace that offers professional tutors to students in a one-on-one -on -one atmosphere. One-on-one -on -one mentorships have helped change the trajectory in my career, allowing me to advance further as a software engineer and become the person that I am today. This is why I generally recommend Wisent as your go-to place when finding a tutor and mentor to help you in your web development journey. I highly recommend y'all to check out Wisent. I have left a link in the description below and get $25 off your first Wisent tutoring lesson. Check them out and Wisent, I wanna thank y'all for sponsoring this video. Next, number two. Expectations versus reality, work-life balance. You see all these videos, you see all these YouTubers on Twitter, you name it, who talk about how they have great work-life balance at the tech company. Please understand that this is not true everywhere. Even where I work now, I do have work-life balance, but I also work at a startup. Right now, I currently work around 40, 60 hours a week. On average, maybe 50. 45 to 50 hours, but there are times to hit 60, 70. When I was in Europe for two weeks, I was working 70, 80 hours in a week because it just had to be done. People expect to just have a great work-life balance. No, not true at all. I think it is very important to note that when you do join a company, don't expect to have work-life balance right off the bat, especially for those who just joined your first job. You think it's gonna be easy just because you got that first job? Guess what, you think you know what you need to know to get that first job? Well, guess what, now you need to know what you need to know to keep that job. Now you need to know what you need to know to make sure you can get the next job, make more money. Now you need to make sure that you continue learning. You don't know what GraphQL and Apollo is? Well, you better know it now 
You don't have time to learn that during work. Well, you better learn it after work. You better learn it during the weekends. Don't expect that you will have an amazing work-life balance right off the bat because, yo, it doesn't work that way, especially if you're self taught developer going, getting your first job in tech, okay? Don't, don't expect that. It is not easy. It's very difficult. When I was at my first job, I was still studying code till three in the morning every day for about one or two years. That's just how it is. Don't expect that. People expect to have amazing work-life balance right after that. No, there's, there's a reason that we get paid better than most of the people or 99% of the people who work at tech companies. There's a reason that engineers make the most money because we never stop learning. We have to continuously learn the best and the greatest and the latest things in technology and keep upping our game. That's why we make the most money out of most of the people who work, I mean, out of everyone else in tech. Expectations versus reality, culture, and just, perks at work in general. When I first saw this video on how you don't need to be smart to become a developer at your job as a software engineer, I automatically assumed that every company offers free lunch, free breakfast, free dinner, if you are at the office on a daily basis. With all the big smiles and tech promotions and ads and why you should work for them, um, I, I automatically assumed every tech company you work at will have an amazing culture. Please understand that in reality, this is not true at all. You will not have meals every part of the day at the tech company you work at, unless you work at the top fan companies. Next, culture. One of the main reasons, aside from better pay and why, when, when someone leaves the actual job, it's because they're not happy. And when I mean they're not happy, the culture isn't great at that company. And I thought that every job would have great culture. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is not true at all. But now I'm here at Airbyte where I work, I love it. I mean, like literally, here, check this out, yo. Chris Sean, developer, advocate, Airbyte. That's me, that's me. Now I work here, I love my job. The culture here is amazing. They pay me better than any other company I've ever worked at, by the way. But on top of that, benefits are amazing. I get to travel the world for a living. I'm gonna work in the Philippines for like a month and a half, starting in November, and my company and my manager is totally fine with it. What the heck? And I still get to receive my San Francisco, Silicon Valley salary. That culture is amazing where I work now. And so now that I've found a great culture, which took me six years to freaking find the best culture I've ever worked in. Do you think I plan on just leaving like that for just anything? Hell no. I want to continue working my butt off here, continue contributing and bringing value to the company because I know how hard it is to find a team, a company, CEOs, co-founders that you work under who are, are just as amazing as well. So that is what this video is about. I want y'all to know the reality of working as a developer. What I wanted to show y'all was how difficult it is working in tech. That Working in tech isn't just green grass on the other side. Working in tech isn't just flowers and bubbles, right? Your life is just so great. I mean, it is amazing. The fact that I make more money than doctors that went to school for 10 years, right? And I'll make more than doctors who went to school for 12 or 15 years, right? When I eventually start making 400K, 500K years an engineer. That's going to happen. It, it, it's amazing. But that, that opportunity to make this much money isn't just given to anyone. It's those who are willing to work and understand that we do have to get our hands and our feet dirty and get some scratches in this battle of becoming the best engineer we can potentially be to make sure that we can receive the opportunity to make as much money as we do. Please understand that. Anyway, thank you all for watching this video. Please hit subscribe if you haven't. Like this video and leave a comment if you can. If not, I'll see y'all later. Love you all. Peace out.